Hello and welcome to this presentation and demonstration at uh, the RISC-V Pavilion at DAC 2020. And what we're going to be talking about today from Empiris is about the verification of RISC-V uh, processes, a little bit about compliance and about the design verification. I'm, I'm going to do the introduction here, Simon Davidman, and then Liam Moore, my colleague, is actually going to go talk about the, the DB and uh, do a demonstration. So RISC V presents new challenges. It's a new ISA, it's an open standard. And the challenge comes is that there's lots and lots of people will design the, the, their own RTL. Traditionally with an ISA that you had one vendor and they would make sure that uh, they designed it correctly to be the standard and they would verify it and make sure it's fully compliant. And all you have to do as a user would do integration tests. But with RISC V, there's no standard approach and what we have to do is, is learn from the way that industry's done SOC verification and apply that to process of verification. And one of the things that we've been talking about a lot is uh, compliance testing. And that's really about checking that you've understood that the, the device uh, matches the specification. You've understood that the, the way the specification is written and understood. And it attempts to do certain things and test it. It's not about full DV, but it's about configuring a simulator, a reference, getting a signature and comparing it against your device. But one of the big challenges, RISC-V is highly configurable. So it gets very complicated and there's many, many options that you can select. And um, one of the key things that's very important is you have a high quality reference and you compare the reference against your design and you have to make sure that things are very uh, configured to be the same because you want the reference to be configured to be exactly the same and it doesn't matter whether you're doing you know directed tested or random testing you need a good quality reference and that's really where um uh, empiris uh, we come we are we are a simulation technology company uh, we have provided uh, a technology called uh, OVP Sim, which has open public APIs for modeling. We've got a simulator, RISC V OVP Sim, of the RISC V processor. It models all of the, the standard in that, and we make that freely available uh, from uh, GitHub. And it's available in the compliance suite and the bit manipulation suites, there, and, and it works out of the box. And it's really for, for verification. And but verification is a, is a big challenge. I mean, you know, if, if you read the ARM uh, technology that, that they talk about, they, they verify a processor with 10 to the 15 cycles, which is a huge number. And the challenge as a risk five developer is, you know, if you're buying a, a core um, or whether you're producing it yourself or whether you're using an open source one, you have to verify the processor, you have to verify the subsystems, you have to verify the interface into the, the network on chips, and then you have to handle custom instructions. And that's one of the things that in Empiris we are experts in verification here. And our, our, our model allows you to, to know, do not just a single core, we can do multi-heart processes, or we can do custom instructions, we can actually uh, do all the asynchronous stuff and debug modes, and we have the technology which allows us to do what we call a step and compare DV flow, and that's really what the rest of this um, uh, presentation is going to be about. And we have many customers that use that as in commercial companies in open uh, source uh, collaborations or using it, it with their tools and, and test generators in there. So now what I'm going to do is pass you over to Lee Moore, who's going to go through into more detail. So what I'm going to talk about here is the encapsulation of the RISC-V OVP processor model, which covers all of the RISC-V um, specifications. It's an envelope model. And we're going to show how we encapsulate this inside a system Verilog so that it's used during design verification as a reference model to the RTL which we're intending to ensure meets whatever the design goals are for that particular implementation. When we implement this inside of the system Verilog wrapper, then we still have capabilities of all of our other technologies, such as our tracing, our tools, and our debuggers. So we can connect to things like GDB or the MPD uh, eGUI Eclipse. Now, in terms of the encapsulation and what uh, visibility there is of that core model, uh, we expose out all of the internals of that core model through the DPI into the system Verilog map, wrapper. So it makes the GPRs, the CSRs, the FPRs and vectors, if they're, if they're present in that particular model, makes them available to the test bench for comparison purposes. Because what we really want to be able to do is at the point of where each instruction gets retired by 
the RTL core, we then want to compare that against our reference model to ensure that the state is, um, is equivalent between the two. Now, in addition to exposing out the internal state of the processor model, we also have to provide the tasks for driving the uh, bus transactors for doing things such as fetches, loads, and stores. And so what we end up having is something that looks like this, which is the RTL of the core that we're comparing against and the OVP model itself. And in the test bench, we then have some routines which allow us to compare the internal state whenever we run an instruction through the pipeline in the RTL such that we can compare it to the OVP model. So let's show a simple example of this running here. What we're going to do is we're going to run the dry stones example on a, uh, a model consisting of, uh, sorry, a simulation platform consisting of the RTL of a CV32E40P, which is the open hardware processor model. And we're going to run that with a, a model configured to match what its uh, intended behavior is in terms of the extensions and interrupts and things like that. So let's just run this in tandem doing the comparison. So unfortunately what you notice straight away there is that we get some reported differences. So our test bench is kind of doing its job. It's telling us there are differences between the two environments. And if we look at that in a bit more detail, we see that we get a problem here at time 2590 where the uh, reference model has got uh, a fetch address of B, uh, 9B74 and the RTL has got a fetch address of 9AD8. Now, because we don't see the preceding events to this, we don't really know what, why that's occurred. So what we need to do is to turn on some additional debug capabilities. And in fact, I'm going to turn on the very basic capability, which is turning on tracing of the internal disassembly and register dumping of the processor model. So let's just run that one more time. But this time, I'm going to enable the tracing and see if this gives us a little bit more information to determine why the two have diverged. So again, let's kill that at that point and it's reloaded in here so now you'll see that I'm able to get my disassembly out so I'm seeing my individual instructions and the register dumping uh, occurring you'll notice here this is where I get my difference this is where the divergence is and the divergence is uh, that we've got we, we've performed a branch to two different locations the branch has occurred just before here so this is saying branch if not equal to 0 to 9 B74 which is the branch taken by the reference model, but it's not taken by the RTL. So it's it's evaluated that the 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 value is equal to zero at this point. Now, why could that be? Well, if we actually look at the RTL here, you can see that we've put in a, a deliberate error at this point, where uh, the comparison which is used for a branch is tied to zero. That's why that failed. So let's very quickly fix that deliberate error and just prove that now we get the correct behaviour for running the RTL against that reference model. So, yep, it's looking a lot better now. We're getting the uh, expected uh, messages coming out from executing the Drystones benchmark. And after it's completed that benchmark, we, we don't see any differences now between the two. Now, what I've shown there is a very simple example of getting some additional information out of the core that's executing. What I can show you is that the much more powerful things that we can do, because, of course, we have you know, the power of both the system Verilog simulator in terms of its, um, its capabilities of doing source level RTL debugging and waveform tracing, in addition to what we have from the software perspective, which is the, um, the, the execution of the code, the stack management, uh, the internal register views and things like that. And we can run these two together. So here what I'm going to show you is running both the RTL debugger with the um, Imperus debugger, which gives us the software view, and seeing that we can get data from both of these things, in addition to what we just showed, which was the uh, register tracing and disassembly tracing. So I've got a breakpoint in, in my example here at the moment for breaking on main. So let's just continue till we hit that breakpoint. And you'll see I've got a lot of information come out here. So I've got my register dumping disassembly down here. I've also got uh, all of the tracing, let's zoom all the way out. You can see there's a lot of events that have happened in that time. 
we, if I zoom in a little bit at the end, we can see uh, what we've been executing in terms of register changes. Remember I said that we export out the internal register state of the of the model. Here we can see all the GPRs for, from the model and how they've been updated with the instructions that execute over time. And having this debugger here, you know, we can do all the regular things you'd expect. So we can step through our code and everything else updates accordingly. So we're still getting our trace coming out and we're getting our waveforms dumped. But we've got this very powerful view of seeing the internals of the processor model and also getting the register level and uh, hardware view of this as well. Now, actually, just running the um, the simulation is only part of all this. Uh, that you can you can actually get functionally accurate representations of uh, of what you're trying to execute from both the RTL and also the uh, the the OVP model representation. But of course. With with uh, this kind of technology, you have the kind of things that give you system Verilog functional coverage. And what we've also done is we've included a class library to get information regarding the instructions that are being executed. So you can start to qualify the tests themselves that are executing on this platform. So let's just run that. So now we're going to run the the same simulation that we had before, but this time we've got our... In fact, let's just go and have a look at this while it runs. This time we've got our... Uh, coverage library plugged in that's going to look at the types of instructions that are being executed and the types of operands that those instructions are using in order to, to determine for us, you know, have we got uh, good a good level of coverage from the software perspective that's executing on the RTL that we're we're actually testing against our reference model. And so at the end we get a very verbose output here as you can see giving us the individual details of things such as the types of instructions. So here we see an XOR immediate, the types of um, sorry the operands for RD, the operands for RS1 and RS2, uh, sorry immediate one and um, also we have other cover points in here to check for things like you've had a negative immediate a positive immediate um, we can actually see this as a as we see here in terms of a, a report that would come out which gives us a summary as well so in terms of what we have we have a, 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 an encapsulated model within within the system Verilog domain gives full visibility of everything going inside but also still gives you the power of all the tools and debuggers both from the software and the hardware perspective within both domains of both the hardware and the software debug. So thank you Lee for that. Um, just to wrap up this presentation, so design verification is critical for risc five, and compliance testing is just a subset of that. A key fundamental thing you need is a reference model and from Empiris they're available. They can be used in directed testing, instruction stream generating verification and also um, for, for, for anything you're doing for processor um, verification with RISC-V in there. And we can use an assistant Verilog test bench in an environment with a step and compare methodology which is the most efficient flow. And so these flows are evolving, but we have the technology available today. So thank you very much for listening to this. If you want more information, please email us at info.empirus.com, visit our website. And if you're actually watching this presentation as part of the, uh, the virtual DAC, please come along to our sort of virtual uh, exhibition stand and uh, come and talk to us. Thanks very much.